Let's go and open our eyes. Let's go sweet dreams on the other side. And what better way to introduce a show that I'm really not sure how to describe than with the opening that seems to summarize what's going on here perfectly while also not making that much sense, or something like that anyway. And well, Gintama is something special. It is a show that doesn't have as big of a fan base as the other long-running shonen like Naruto, One Piece, and so on, but those who do like it love it, with the new season of Gintama being very close to Brotherhood as a top-rated anime on Mal. Though I came to the show quite skeptical, I thought it was just an episodic comedy so it can't compete with the truly great anime out there, but I still wanted to give it a fair chance to see how good it is. Unfortunately, with shows that are this long, it would take a very, very, very long time to watch all of it so I could form an opinion on the show as a whole. So instead, I've decided to give Pintama and a couple other long-range shows uh, one to two dozen episodes to prove to me why I should keep going. I understand that I won't be able to fully evaluate a show after seeing such a small part of it, but I feel I can at least form an educated opinion on it, and if a show can't hook me with this chance, then the odds are good it won't be worthwhile to keep going. Because I really do not want to trudge through a lot of mediocrity to get to a point where it might be good, especially when there are so many shows out there that I want to see where I think I would like the thing from beginning to end. Moving back to Gintama though, it is really a one of a kind show. It is an episode of comedy, action, suspense, sci-fi, historical, slice of life, philosophical, social comedy, parody, or whatever subset of those the writers decided would make a good episode that week. The world of Gintama is set in Edo, Japan, but about 10 years prior to the show starting, aliens invaded. The samurai tried to fight off the aliens, but they were in a match and lost, so now the country is filled with aliens and their technology. With a world like this, you'd expect the show to tell a gritty story about the humans rising up from their oppressors, but that doesn't happen, at least for the most part. Instead, life just goes on as normal, or what has become normal for these characters. While the aliens may be in charge, the humans and aliens more or less live in peace, and it's the conflicts between them that are the exception and not the rule. And this creates a very interesting backdrop for the stories that the show tells with a mix of the culture of historic Japan, along with a lot of modern and futuristic elements. The show focuses on Gintoki, a samurai who fought against the aliens, but has since moved on with his life. He is very content with his life as someone who just performs odd jobs and reach on and jump. Kentucky is what makes Gintama such a great and unique show, because instead of dwelling on his past in one revenge or liberation, he just wants a normal life and embraces whatever small desires he has in front of him. And his mindset is the same mindset that the show takes, just showing the daily life and adventures the characters go through. So yes, this is an episodic comedy so far. I know that there are some serious arcs later on, but those don't start until like around episode 60 or 70, and I really believe a show needs to be good enough to hook you earlier than that. And well, as I have said before, I'm not a fan of episodic shows. But Gintama is an exception. In fact, I might even go so far as to say it is the best example of how to do an episodic show right. There are a lot of things it does right, and this makes it work well despite and sometimes because of it being an episodic show. Each episode has an interesting story, and this really is the key for a show like this to work. Each episode has its own interesting story, and this really is key for a show like this to work because there is no continuous plot thread to keep the viewer interested. Gintama has a lot of variety to the type of story that each episode tells. One episode could be very lighthearted with it fighting over who will get the most meat when they're having hot pot, two more serious episodes where they're discovering an underground fighting ring, or they end up getting wrapped up into some drug trafficking. Because the show is episodic, it's able to switch how serious it wants to be from episode to episode, which really does help keep the show from getting stale. Gintama is also able to use this vast cast of characters wonderfully because of how the show is structured. Each episode tends to focus on a group of side characters and they get some exploration and character development which helps us get to know them better. They were also able to slowly tease out more about these characters, such as the mystery of what's up with Elizabeth. Though by far the best thing about Kintama, at least so far, is its comedy. I could talk about the interesting world or the characters, but those alone would not be enough to warrant watching 300 or ever how many episodes are out right now. The show's comedy is built off of the interaction between all these over-the-top characters. Every character has a strong enough personality that their dialogue just really builds off of each other to come up with some of the most hilarious lines I've ever heard, especially when the characters are taking the absurd situations that they are in seriously. There's also a touch of fourth wall breaking, which I just always find fun. I do want to address a misconception that I've heard, which says that Gintama is just a referential comedy. From what I've seen, there are some references to other shows here, but it's such a small amount of comedy that it doesn't matter, as I really believe that someone who did not pick up on the references would find the show just as funny as someone who did. So if the reason that you're writing off the show is because it's just a referential comedy, then you frankly do not know the show well enough to judge it. Now, it is true that a person's taste in humor may be different than mine. The absurdity of the comedy hits my taste perfectly, so I love it. But if this is not your type of humor, then I really don't think there will be enough otherwise to keep your interest. That's not to say there aren't other things like about the show, the character explorations as I mentioned earlier, the stories of each episode, and even some interesting themes explored, but if the humor doesn't work for you, then I don't think these things will matter. 
Something else I want to praise the show for is its use of music for the emotional moments. There is a simple piano track which is used perfectly to highlight the emotions of the scenes that it has used it. I was not expecting Kitam to pack so much power, but it often seems that the absurd shows pack the most punch for me. Moving on to things I dislike about the show, and well, I can't think of much. There were a couple episodes which I didn't like as much as the others, but I would not necessarily consider them bad. Sometimes it could be confused remembering who was who when a side character is gone for us several episodes, but this is a pretty minor complaint. There also isn't really a big hook to keep me watching one episode after another, but I have been using Kitam as a show to watch like right before bed to help me relax, so this is actually a good thing. I am worried that as I keep going, eventually the episode of the comedy will get dull, but so far it hasn't. I also don't know how well the series parts will mesh with the comedy. Especially considering the praise that these series parts are getting, I'm afraid that I will just find them to be overhyped and not enjoy them as much. Still, I am looking forward to finally getting to them. So, for my decision here, am I going to keep going with the show or drop it? Well, to no one's surprise that's been listening, I'm going to keep going, and it's a show that I would recommend that you all at least try. You may want to start with episode 3 because that introduces the story with episodes 1 and 2 being filler with the cast already together, or you can start with episode 217 because it's a great example of the comedy that Kintama offers, and that's where I started. Well, actually, I started with the first episode of the new season when it aired, and I didn't really care for that one much, so I dropped the show until my friends got me to watch 217. So, yeah, don't be like me and start with 217, or 3, or be a weird person and start with the first episode. Either of those would be good. I still did not think I would call it the best anime ever up there with Brotherhood, but it will probably end up somewhere in my top list, and who knows, maybe it will keep getting better from here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and now that I'm done making a video about the show, I can go back to watching it and posting nightly screenshots of my favorite lines. Anyway, I'll talk to you later, and thank you for watching.